Hello, I'm Jacopo Bertolotti, and this is the first episode of, of the Scientific Animations with Mathematica. Today, we are going to look at manipulating graphic primitives, and our goal will be to produce a simple animation showing uh, how a sonic boom looks like, uh, like the one that is now running on the screen. Mathematica works with cells uh, a bit like Jupyter Notebooks, if you're familiar with them, which needs to be evaluated one by one. In our case, this is going to be a simple one, so we are only going to use one cell. The starting point is to draw some graphic primitives. So, to do this in Mathematica, the environment that we want to use is called graphics. In Mathematica, all functions have cap capital letter, and all arguments are between square brackets. Now, graphics accept a list of uh, commands, and all lists in Mathematica are between curly brackets. So, let's make a bit of space. The first thing that we want to draw uh, is our source. That is going to be a disk. Disk, we need to specify the position of the disk and its radius. If we just evaluate this, we get a disk. Now, if you don't tell anything, Mathematica will create just enough space to fit uh, the object that you are creating. What we want is to uh, make this disk in a much larger space. So, Let's define what is going to be the plot range of our graphic. This way, we have now a bounding box of our graphics between minus 5 and 5 in both directions, and our disk is still uh, of size 1. We are going to adjust that later. Now, we also want uh, to plot some circles around it. Same syntax. This is a list divided by comma. First plot the disk, then plot the circle. Okay. We want several circles. We are not happy with just one. So let's create here a table that will generate a list. What is missing here, Mathematica is telling us that something is missing, is an iterator, something that is going to uh, run over make the table. Let's call our index n, that is going to go between 0 and let's say 5. Now, this is only going to produce 5 times the circle, uh, but what if we make the radii of the circles uh, different? Okay, we are starting getting somewhere. We have a source in the middle and we have circles going around. Now, another thing that we can specify is the step of this. So, let's make the circles closer to each other. And let's make our disk also smaller. Okay, this is a starting point. Now, what we would really like is for these circles to move and to expand at constant speed. So, to do that, we are going to create a table around everything here with our new variable is going to be time, time is going to be passing between, let's say, 0 and 5 in step of 0 0.1. It doesn't really matter, we are going to adjust all those parameters later. Now, if we just do this, it's not going to be very interesting. We are just going to produce a bunch of the same circles. Uh, what we really want is for the radius to increase with time. But this way, all the circles are going to have the same radius. Let's say that circles with different n will have a different radius. Now, this is still not enough because we also want n to be smaller than t. Otherwise, we are getting uh, negative radii. Now, if we do this, we get a list of all frames. Now, this is good as a list of frames, but what we want is an animation. So. First thing that we are going to do is to give a name of the, to this, frames. Uh, we are going to finish everything with a semicolon that tells Mathematica not to display it. And then we are going to tell Mathematica to display these frames as an animation. Uh, 
with 20 frames per second. Again, this is adjustable. Okay, this is a start, good starting point. We don't have a lot of frames, but things are going in the right direction. Now, what are we missing? Well, nothing is moving. We need the disk to move and generate the circles at different points. So, let's define an auxiliary function. Position. And let's for the moment say that it's going to move uh, linearly with time. X coordinate of the disk is going to move uh, with time. Is this good? Well, partially. The disk is moving correctly, but the circles that represent the various the various waves are not. Uh, they are still all generated where they are. So what we want is to change the position of each circle. But remember, each circle must be centered at a position that is equal to the position when it was generated. So not position of uh, time, but position of n. Okay. Now, can you see? Our dot is moving at the same speed as the circles are expanding. So, we need to adjust a bit our uh, parameters. Let's make this lower. Okay, and now the circle is moving slower, but the circles are not. So, we need to adjust also the speed here. Okay. This is better. The circle are generated at the correct position and the disk is also moving. We just need to wait for a longer time. Okay. Now, what is happening here is that the position is moving is increasing linearly with time. So you are never going to uh, change the Doppler effect. You are never going to overcome the speed of the waves and generate a sonic boom. So let's make this grow more than linearly with time. We need also to adjust this one. Okay. Good, but not perfect. What is missing here? Well, it's escaping our frame. We are not seeing what's happening anymore. After a few seconds, this is just going out. So we can either, either make a very long uh, window to keep everything in there, or we can change the frame of reference. We can just um, center always the disk at zero, zero. So let's center this at zero, zero. And now it means that we have to subtract here Okay. Okay, we are almost there. What is now missing is just to adjust the various parameters uh, in order to get a nice uh, animation. So, what we might want is to have more circles generated. So, let's generate them more often. Uh, we also might want more uh, frames here. So. Uh, let's make uh, twice as many frames and let's see how it goes. Sonic Boom! And we have our first animation ready with just a few lines uh, of code and only generating uh, a disk and a bunch of circles that are going around. Thank you and hopefully there is going to be a next time.